This is Twit. We already know that smartphone cameras now have sufficient resolution. Yes. And our software has become sufficiently clever that a photo of a traditional house key at a distance can be used to reconstruct a working physical key. Yes. And we also know that the vibrations of objects in a distant room. Right. We've talked about balloons, a bag of potato chips, <laughs> a light bulb, or even the leaves of a plant can be observed optically by laser or similar technology at a distance to reconstruct the acoustic waves those objects are being subjected to to eavesdrop on conversations occurring in that room. And now, with the publication of some intriguing new research, another piece of our traditional perception and assumption of security has just fallen to the wayside. The research paper, which documents the detailed and painstaking work by three quite enterprising students in the Department of Computer Science at the National University of Singapore, bears the title, Listen to Your Key Towards Acoustic-Based Physical Key Inference. Oh, oh, oh no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, my God. Yes. Okay. The abstract of the paper reads, Physical locks are one of the most prevalent mechanisms for securing objects such as doors. While many of these locks are vulnerable to lock picking, they are still widely used as lock picking requires specific training with tailored instruments and easily raises suspicion. In this paper, we propose Spikey, a novel attack <laughs> that significantly lowers the bar. Oh for God. an attacker as opposed to the lock picking attack by requiring only the use of a smartphone microphone to infer the shape of the victim's key, namely bitings or cut depths, which form the secret of a key. When a victim inserts his or her key into the lock, the emitted sound is captured by the attacker's microphone. Spikey leverages the time difference between audible clicks to ultimately infer the biting information, i.e. the shape of the physical key. As a proof of concept, we provide a simulation based on real-world recordings and demonstrate a significant reduction in search space from a pool of more than 330,000 keys to three candidate keys for the most frequent case. Okay. <laughs> so in other words, yes, Leo, these researchers have shown that just capturing the sound of a traditional physical key being slid into its lock is all that's needed to recreate that key with a high level of confidence, a nearby smartphone or even the house's nearby smart doorbell microphone provides audio which is sufficiently accurate to provide the clues. Um, we all know how a traditional physical lock and key work, right? Inside the lock are a series of six spring-loaded pins which are each split at a different location along their length. When the proper key is inserted into the lock, the ridges on the key pushing against those internal springs positions each of the pins such that the splits in the pins line up with the edge of the lock's cylinder. Thus, no pin prevents the cylinder from then freely rotating in the lock. And I suppose, because I'm a bit odd, throughout my lifetime, I've often stopped to appreciate the sheer beauty of that simple invention. It requires no power. It is durable and largely weatherproof, except in the face of extreme freezing. 
and it's extremely reliable, so much so that its failure is vanishingly infrequent. And when it does eventually fail, typically after decades of reliable use and wear, it does so in a fail-soft fashion only after providing ample clues that its need for servicing is becoming acute. So such that jiggling the key in the lock is a long-standing meme. But mostly, it achieves all this in an example of a brilliant trade-off. We get all of that in return for accepting that it's not perfect protection. Is it cryptographically secure? Of course not. Can it be picked and defeated by anyone skilled in the art with a few simple lock picking tools? Yep. Are there sufficient combinations that no one else's key will open it? No. A famous hack is just to try locks with keys they don't belong to. Sometimes you just get lucky, specifically because the universe of all possible combinations is comparatively small. But the likelihood of any random key working in any random lock is low enough that no one bothers to try. But it's exactly that comparatively small universe of possibilities that allows this research to succeed. Once the audio of a key insertion has been obtained, Spikey's inference software gets to work filtering the signal to extract the comparatively strong metallic clicks as the key's ridges hit the lock's pins. The click occurs when one of the spring-loaded pins crosses over the top of any of the key's ridges. I have a picture, a photo, a diagram from the, their, their PDF, which shows that in the instance of the click occurring on the six pins. Um, they explain, as I just did, how the, the lock works uh, mechanically and then the event of the click. And I actually, I, I made, they, had, they have a, a photogram of the audio at which plays from Google, which you can hear. And Leah, you, you should probably put this into the podcast. It's GRC's shortcut of the week. So it's grc.sc slash 781. Um, and there it is. And of course, we've all heard this, but you don't pay any attention to it, right? Exactly. And it doesn't sound this clear, but I guess modern phone microphones are good enough. They could pick it yes. up. Uh, yes. So so basically, they, they say, that, well, so, so the, the grooves the, on clicks, the side don't do don't do diddly. It's no, just the correct. It's just the teeth. The, right. The, the bidding. Well, now, OK, so the, the grooves in the side do create classes of keys which will work in the lock. Ah, right. And those do differ from, you know, a, a, among brands and within brands. So so that does create subsets. Right. Um, but you can easily, uh, there probably aren't that many sets, I would guess. Exactly. There yeah. are not. Yeah. And, and so, so, for example, many times your key won't even go in. Yeah, yeah. And then if it does, then it will go in, but it won't turn. Right. Um, so anyway, the, the the clicks drive the inference analysis. It's the time between the clicks, which allows the spiky software, which they've developed, to compute the key's <laughs> inter-ridge distances and what locksmiths refer to as the biting depth of those ridges, which is how deeply they cut down into the key shaft and where they plateau out. If a key were to be inserted at a non-constant speed, the analysis would be defeated, though the software can compensate for small uh, insertion speed variations. So, but if you were like, if this freaked you out and you were at high risk, you felt, then you could simply start inserting your key at a non-constant pace and you would defeat this. But 
given all the available acoustic information, complete disambiguity cannot be obtained. So they end up with multiple possible keyings in the best case. And this is why the paper's abstract noted that the spiky software will output the three most likely key designs to fit the lock that was used in the audio provided by that file, which does reduce the potential search space, as they said, from 330,000, which is, is, is the universe of possible combinations, down to just three. They said, when a victim inserts a key into the door lock, an attacker walking by records the sound with a smartphone microphone. Spikey detects the timing of these clicks from the sound. We then utilize the click timestamps to compute the adjacent inter-ridge distances given a constant insertion speed. We use the computed distances to infer the relative differences of adjacent biting depths, which Spikey exploits to ultimately obtain a small subset of candidate keys that includes the victim's key code. They said we detect all click events from the audio recording. Uh, they do subject it to a high pass filter to reduce the impact of low frequency ambient noise, retaining only frequencies above 15 kilohertz that contains the information, the acoustic information about the clicks. And they said, subsequently, we identified the starting point of each click or its onset in the pre-processed signal by applying change point detection algorithm on short time windows around the computed peaks to account for their millisecond granularity. They said it finds the least sum of standard deviations across two regions that transition from low to high amplitude. That is in terms of the, the amplitude of the click sound. So they got they, they did some some serious acoustic processing to just to absolutely nail down the time event of the click. Um, for anyone who's interested, I've got a P, the PDF link to their research in the paper. Uh, it goes on to explain exactly how they convert the click onset timings into a few possible candidate keyings. Um, so anyway, I just thought, you know, one more longstanding time honored piece of real world technology has just fallen. Hysterical. We can no longer insert our key into a lock without the, without the possibility of somebody simply eavesdropping. And you can imagine, Leo, if you had a, a telephoto microphone at a distance, you know, aimed at that lock, and, you know, if somebody were to insert the key, it would be able to pick it up at a distance with a big parabolic mic and and capture the sound. And wow. that would be enough. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that cool? Just amazing. Um, how doable do you think that is? I mean, I know it's theoretically, of course, but. I mean, they they did it. They they <laughs> recorded it. They were able they, to oh, make they the wrote key. The, they wrote the software. It designed three keys, and one of those three wow. opened the lock. Wow, isn't that great? I think I just you got to admire the ingenuity and the, the cleverness involved. Whether this yep. is a, I could see a big three-letter agency using this. We should write this into the next uh, Jason Bourne script or something. I think that'd be useful. so. It would be useful in a situation where the you would be observed picking the lock. Certainly a three-letter agency would have people who can, you know, pick a lock. I, right in, you know, yeah. I can pick a lock. You can yeah. pick a lock. Yeah. You know, techies know how to do that. It's right. just, you know, it's not that difficult. But during the process, you're observable. So if you had a scenario where someone posing as a, you know, a cable TV serviceman or maybe the house cleaner, you know, needed to just be able to walk up quickly insert the key and enter, you'd want to be prepped ahead of time. 
And so this would allow you to produce one of three keys where they could look like they were fumbling for the right key among their key ring. But in fact, they were trying, the, you know, the, the subset of possibilities. And then it's like, oh, yeah, there it is. And then they you know, <laughs> waltz right in with everybody else standing around watching them. Wow, that's wild.